Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg and here we make hard candy. And today we're going to make blue shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day. Blue, you might ask? Well, they're also going to be flavored in a vanilla whiskey blend. And while whiskey is clearly a modern symbol of St. Patrick's Day, was it back when St. Patrick was alive? Heck, did he even enjoy it? So as we assemble our Thomas Mills candy press, this one's from about 1871, and it has a candy roller in it of shamrocks with little veins up and down every leaf. Let me tell you about the flavor. I'm playing some games between the flavor vanilla and the flavor whiskey. You see, the vanilla will overwhelm the whiskey, but it will also fade faster. So if I do this right, when you put this piece in your mouth, the first flavor you're going to taste is vanilla, and then it's going to fade into a whiskey. This is one of the cool things you can do if you learn how the oils and flavors and extracts work in candy. Now don't worry, or prepare to be disappointed, there's no alcohol in this candy at all. At 310 degrees, no alcohol survives the process. The sugar, the flavors, and the colors are already in the pot when I pour it. And I'm pouring this candy that's been heated to 310 degrees on my candy cooling table. This table was made in 1891 in Hartford, Connecticut, and its purpose is to cool down the candy as fast as possible. Sometimes I use bars on the right and left. I do that to retain the heat so I can add food coloring or flavoring on the table with my little wooden spoons. But in this case, I want the sugar to cool as fast as possible. Everything that's going to be in it is in it. This is just a shortcut to let me cool the candy faster. And it's a pretty cool shortcut that Jake came up with. Now, why blue shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day? Shouldn't they be green? Well, real shamrocks are green, but St. Patrick's color as a saint was blue. Now, St. Patrick's was never canonized since there were really no saints canonized before about 1000 AD, and they were just grandfathered into the Catholic Church. But St. Patrick's tradition calls for a blue, and in historic Ireland, there were a lot of blues being used. Even some of their ancient flags had blue on it, although I don't know if this is associated with St. Patrick. The green didn't take over in Ireland until 1789 with the Irish Rebellion, and that was the same point that the shamrock became the symbol of Ireland. And, of course, with the rolling green fields, who could doubt that Ireland was a country of green? But St. Patrick is still a saint of blue. And there are a lot of legends about St. Patrick, that he used the shamrock to teach the Trinity, a basic tenet of Catholicism, and also that he drank lots of whiskey. There's a legend called Drowning the Shamrock, or Puta Padreg, where St. Patrick apparently went to a tavern, and he was not given a full measure of whiskey, an ounce and a half. And he was upset about this, and he declared that whiskey should be drunk on his feast day every year. Well, this doesn't exactly make sense, but the tradition has that you float a shamrock on top of a glass of whiskey and drink it on St. Patrick's Day. I guess it doesn't matter that he didn't know he was going to be made a saint, he didn't know when his saint day was going to be, but more important, while steam distilling was around in Persia as early as 2000 or 3000 BC, the art of distilling alcohol came much later, and it did not make it to Ireland till about the 11th century. This might affect the providence of the story, but it's a story I like. So we've been feeding the hot sugar through our press and making them into little shamrocks. What I love about this particular roller is if the color's right and light, the candy looks less like candy coming out of the press and more like lace. Thinking back to the dates revolving around St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day was declared in 1631, but the green didn't come around until 1789. Now, the first St. Patrick's Day parade was in New York City, as we discussed in the previous video, in 1762. I wonder if they didn't wear blue, because the green wouldn't have been a thing yet. So I think these blue shamrocks are pretty cool. It's blue because it's the color of St. Patrick, and they're shamrocks because St. Patrick used the three leaves of the shamrock to teach his message. And this candy is going to be part of a shamrock assortment that we haven't completed at the time of the filming of this video. It's going to include an apple candy, which is in a forest green because St. Patrick planted apple trees, an Irish cream, and this is a vanilla whiskey. We're hoping to also do something with Guinness and something with Brambrack. I hope I pronounced that right. If you want to taste this candy for yourself, you can. 
You can either come by our store in Tallahassee, Florida. We're right off the I-10 exit of Thomasville Road, just minutes from the interstate. We're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. most days, and we serve a great brunch. We have a full-service soda fountain for your ice cream treats, and of course, we're also a toy store as well as a candy store. Or you can get it online. Our website is www.pd.net, and you can order it 24-7. We ship worldwide, and if you like this video, we'd love you to watch more. Please subscribe to us. Click on announcements so you know when we come out with new videos. And of course, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We have lots of other specials. If you want to find out what's going on before other people know, we have an email list that you can subscribe to at www.pd.net. And you'll find out about things before they go online and before we make a video. You'll get the first chance to get some of our candies because we often run out very quickly. Thank you again for watching and we hope we see you with our next video.